visual electrophysiology exam is a multifocal electrocardiogram. You know the principle of this technique. We generate patterns with hexagons, like you see, and each hexagon is uh, controlled by what we call an M sequence. We record the response to all these stimulations with a single electrode, and by decoding, we are able to recover the response from each of these uh, hexagons. Now, the problem using LCD technology, again, it's slow but also the image is not generated at once. It starts from the top and then it takes 10, 16 milliseconds to sweep the entire monitor. So there is a delay between the response from the top and the response from the bottom. So it's difficult to control the latency of the different responses this way. So the way we operate is like this. First of all, the LED backlight is off. Then, while the screen is dark, we generate the pattern. This takes a few milliseconds. And once the pattern is generated, then we send an LED flash here. That allows us to control very accurately the timing of the stimulus when we do multifocal ERG. And this is a very important feature if you want to measure implicit time. Now, another important feature when you do multifocal ERG, it's the same as when you do visual field. You need to correct refraction, and the usual lens, rim lens, are not correct because of their size. They will occlude part of the peripheral stimulation. We have developed this technology of large size lenses, 55 millimeter in diameter. They have a magnetic attachment on this uh, headrest, as you can see here, and this allows us to correct refraction without any uh, occlusion of the peripheral hexagon. That is a typical result. We have used during this exam two types of electrodes. Here we have used a, an ERG jet and here we have used a DTL fiber. Our equipment allows to record both eyes at the same time. Personally, I do recommend that you do one eye at a time. But here we had a very good subject and we were able to record both at the same time and we wanted to compare. Uh, I want to point out also that during this exam, we also recorded eye movement. We can record eye movement throughout the entire exam. And at the end of the exam, we can produce this report where we have the stability of fixation, surface area of fixation during the entire exam. We have blink frequency. We have also the pupil side. And here we have the right eye and the left eye, right in red. So that's the eye with the DTL and the left eye in green. We can also record the video at the same time. So this is a blink or even some small movement. The eye can create these big artifacts, probably because the electrode is not well placed on the cornea. And that after some time, you see, we get a correct response. The amplitude we obtain with the ERG jet is two times larger from what we get from the DTL. So even though we can record with both types of electrode, what we get with the ERG jet is much better in quality. It's also less artifacted by blinks or eye movement. Having an amplitude of the response two times smaller means you would need to increase the examination time by a significant factor, typically by a factor of four, to obtain the same quality of the result. This is the final report at the end of the multifocal ERG exam, where we get the local responses. Each of these responses is the response from one hexagon. And as you can see, it looks very much like a, a flash cone ERG. Here is the map of the amplitude of the P1. So when we look at the responses, we have the N1, the first negative, the P1, the first positive, and typically what we report is the amplitude of P1 as a 2D map that you can see here. But you could also plot N1 amplitude and one implicit time where you can get a lot of data. In order to handle all this data, I think the easiest way for the clinician is to look at this statistical analysis. During this statistical analysis, we calculate the average response for each ring. For we are 2 to 5 degrees, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and you can see those here. The first thing you should look when you interpret a result is the quality of the exam. Again, we look first at the quality. This you can get from this graph here. This graph gives you for each ring the amplitude of the signal, that's the color part, and the amplitude of the noise. This is the black part. 
you can see here that the amplitude of the signal is much larger. So we have good quality in this exam. So we can go to interpretation, we can look at the other data. Let's get an example from a patient taking hydroxychloroquine. Here you can see the report. You will notice that the amplitude of those responses here between 2 and 5 degrees are slightly reduced. But this definitely is better indicated by the statistical analysis. We compare the responses from this patient to the responses of the normal population and correct it for age. That's important. When you do this exam, you must enter birth date. This is used to calculate the age. And age is an important factor because there is a reduction of amplitude with age and also an increase of uh, implicit times. So definitely here you can see that this patient has a reduced amplitude of the N1, which is outer layer response, and that's typical of uh, hydroxychloroquine intoxication, a reduced amplitude between 2 and 5 degrees of the N1 response, which is also appearing on the P1 because uh, what you get in the inner layer is what comes from the outer layer. So again, you have to look at the quality of the response. On the report, we have what we call the baseline. The baseline is a signal recorded throughout the entire exam. So if we record through four or five minutes, this is five minutes of exam. And if you have a, a good, stable patient, the line will be quite flat. If you have a patient with eye movements, with blinks, with problems with electrodes, you will see artifacts appearing on this line. One other thing you need to control during this multifocal ERG is the quality of fixation. Of course, you can use the video. You can also record the fixation stability. But also, we have another way to control fixation. The fixation spot includes a small bar that moves from time to time. And we ask the patient to press a button to indicate if the bar is changing orientation. This is um, a way to stimulate fixation first. Also, it's a good way to control fixation at the end of the exam. This gives you a good indication of the reliability of the patient. So again, as I mentioned before, the statistical analysis is quite important. You will notice also that the analysis is using several criteria. We are using the amplitude of each of these peaks that we compare to the normal population. This is this graph here for each ring. We are also using implicit time. But also an important feature is the ratio of amplitude. We calculate the ratio of amplitude between each ring and a reference ring. Provided the periphery is normal, we can use the periphery as a reference. Typically what happens in the early stage of uh, hydroxychloroquine intoxication, the periphery is still normal and you have a local deficit appearing between 2 and 5 degrees to, to 10 degrees sometimes. And then the absolute amplitude is still normal. The ring ratio, which is here, clearly abnormal. The reason for this is that there is a significant variability of amplitude in the normal ERG response. So in order to have a significant change, it has to be decreased by a factor of two. Now, if you make the ratio to the periphery, provided the periphery is normal, you improve the capacity to detect early stages of deficit significantly.